Hi guys, Jessica Kirk here. Sorry, I'm losing my voice a little bit. You're going to have to turn your volume up tonight. Um, hope everybody had a wonderful day. I don't even know what day it is today. I think it's Wednesday. Today's Wednesday. Yeah, that's, a, that's an indication of how my week's going. I don't know what it is. Anyway. Um, so I wanted to continue our discussion on the steps in the home buying process, right? So I think we left off the other night whenever we were talking about meeting with your realtor after you get that pre-approval and talking about wants and needs and sacrificing some of the wants for some of the needs and, <clears throat> excuse me, about location and that's about the only thing you can't change in a house and that don't get hung up on wallpaper and carpet and paint, right? You've got to go to walk in the home and see the big picture, right? You've got most of the buyers I deal with, the number one thing they're concerned with is where the house is for a number of reasons. If they have kids, they want the school district to be good. Even if they don't have kids, you don't want to buy a home in a less than uh, exemplary school district. Because then for resale, it's gonna, you're not going to have a bigger, as big a profit as other, as other houses in other areas. I'm losing all my words. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> so, bottom line is location is normally the most important. They want a quicker commute, which, as we all know in Houston, that's just silly. <laughs> There's no such thing. Especially if you want... If you have kids and you're trying to live this family life, you're going to drive. But anyway, um, so differentiate between wants and needs, knowing what you can sacrifice. You can always put granite in later. You can fix the floors later, blah, 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 right? There are things you can do later, uh, things that shouldn't prevent you from pulling the trigger on buying off. You shouldn't delay investing in yourself. So, so. so the next thing is, let's say you go out and you've looked at 15 houses or whatever and you find your home and you're ready. Time to write the offer, right? So most of my first-time buyers don't understand that writing an offer is writing a whole contract. It's a, it's nine pages. It's nine pages full of negotiable terms, right? From closing date to option periods to who's paying for the survey, who's paying to transfer HOA docs, who's paying for the title commitment, who's going to pick the title company, how much earnest money. Right? These are all things that we know that's what we're here for right so um, once you you get all those things negotiated we can dissect more into a contract at a later date this is just a kind of a broad stroke about this step the biggest part of a contract that people get real um, zero in on after they've discussed price is this option period so not every state does this Texas didn't do it till about I think it was 15 years ago or something if I'm wrong I'm sure somebody will tell me but um, Used to be, when you bought a home, there's a little, there's two lines on the contract where you can write in, hey, I want to buy this house, but I noticed a leak when I was looking, when I was viewing your home, and I want that to be addressed, right? It was two lines in the contract. That was it. Otherwise, every house that you buy everywhere is as is where it is, period. Well, then somebody came up with a bright idea, I'm sure after a number of lawsuits, to have an option period. In this period of time, the buyer can wake up in the morning and not like his shirt that day and say, I don't want to buy this house anymore. And he gets his earnest money back, the money you've deposited with the title company. You get that back. You don't get the option fee back. Usually it's about $10 a day. Most people do about 10 days, 100 bucks. Okay. So during that time is when you have your inspections. Now, this is the thing that I want everybody to understand. I wish that everybody would listen to this. An inspector is a jack of all trades, a master of none. That is what they are. I love home inspectors, I have nothing against them, but they know a small amount about a lot of things. So everything in their report is going to say, for instance, AC wasn't cooling properly according to code blah 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 14.2867 of the whatever. Get an HVAC tech out. That's all it's going to say. It's not going to tell you what's wrong, if anything necessarily is wrong for sure. It's just going to say that when I held my little magic thermometer up to the air return, it didn't read correctly. You need to hire a HVAC. If they see a plumbing issue, okay, I had one, I'm not kidding, he wrote on the report, disposal is not functioning properly, would not turn on. My sellers were out of town, they'd already moved, they'd already relocated. So before I spent money on getting a plumber out there, I went out there, I dug my hand in the disposal, and I pulled a rag out. It worked just fine. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes it's nothing. It's stuff like that. It's a maintenance issue. It's a oops. Whatever. Who hasn't, you know, gotten something stuck in their disposal? Now, 
to say all that, we all have the big ticket items that we need to be careful about, right? What are the things we want to make sure work when we move in the home? Well, we want to make sure there's no leaks in the roof. We want to make sure the plumbing, uh, the water heater is working. We want to make sure that the AC is good, right? Those are the three big ticket items in a home oh, and the foundation. But anyway, that's a whole nother conversation between settling versus cracks. It's a whole separate issue. But those are three big ticket things, right, honey? Water heater, AC, roof. Can you think of anything else that's a big one? Gas. What about it? What if they live out in the country and they have the water, what do you call it, well? You have that issue too. Well, right. If you're buying a, in some rural property, you need to make sure that your septic tank is working properly. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. That Because that is a big ticket item. Correct. Yeah. Good point. But that's not gas though. That's a septic tank. Um, so, people can get kind of bogged down and mired down in these little bitty repairs. And when you see an inspection report... It's 45 pages long, and it's zoomed in pictures and stuff that looks awful. Doorknobs. Yeah. Yeah. I've had, I also had them one time. I've got two more stories. And just to tell you how you have to take everything with a grain of salt. And this is not a knock on home inspectors. They are doing their job. Okay? Their job is to find stuff wrong. So that's what they do. That's their job. They're doing it. It's fine. But one time I was selling a house, and they said that the outside light would not come on. It was a photo cell light, guys. It was a It was... Motion censored. That's why it wouldn't come on whenever you flipped a switch because you had to be doing this in front of it. Another time they said canned li- can lights are inoperable in the living room. The light bulbs have burned out. <laughs> I mean, can we get a little more specific, right? Because first time any home buyers, really, especially first time homebuyers, their home buyers are nervous anyway. They're nervous. It's a lot of money, right? They had to probably do a lot of work to get pre approved. It's a big step, right? Because the worst thing that can happen if you can't pay your rent is you got to find another place to live. You can't pay your mortgage. You're screwed for like 10 years if you get a foreclosure, right? So it's a big, scary step. The last thing home buyers want is to look at this report of the house they fell in love with. The house they've already started having the love affair with. They've already started. They've decided what they're going to do with the drapes, what they're going to paint the master bedroom. They picked out furniture. They got all excited in here. They're all in love. Honeymoon phase. And then here comes this nasty report. To show you all these awful things. They, you know, if your realtor is worth a damn, the, the, you, w- you won't be in a situation where the report is accurate. That all these things are actually really wrong, right? It will be little penny ante stuff. And if you come to a realtor and on your first meeting you're like, I like older homes. I want to buy a house that was built no later than like 1980. I like wood paneling. I like this. Well, then a, your agent should say, okay, that's fantastic. I love a house with character too. Great. You get a bigger lot size that way, la, la, la. However, you're going to need to be prepared to do a little bit of maintenance, right? Like electrical. Yeah, there's going to be electrical issues. Galvanized do, pipe. Do they have galvanized pipe? There's going to be things that come up. So if you're pre- prepared beforehand, it's less of a shock afterwards, right? It's like thinking you can afford a Honda Civic, and then you go to look at a, well, how much a Mercedes costs. That doesn't make any sense. You need to be prepared that wasn't a good analogy, whatever. You need to be prepared about for what is going to happen, right? And that's what a good agent does. So, um, yeah, so the inspection part is a tenuous part. Now, those 10 days you can negotiate repairs, right? There are lots of sellers that put their house on the market knowing they have issues, right? Knowing they can't necessarily pay to fix them, but they've priced the home a certain way. They've, they've explained to their agent, hey, I want to price it a little higher because I want to give some concessions if necessary for this. You know, I know that my... Um, I don't know. I know my water heater is old. It's still working, but I know it's old. So Paint colors off. Right. I know that I've got, you know, my bedroom's neon. I don't want to paint it. <laughs> Great. We'll work it out. Right? I've had lots of clients like that. Anyway. So, uh, yeah, lots of times they do give a paint allowance or a carpet allowance. But the bottom line with this, with the home buying process, is that you have an agent. You have somebody representing you because it's our job to get stressed out. It's our job to fight for you. It's your job to be reasonable. And listen to your agent, right? All that you need is to be reasonable and realistic, right? Champagne taste, beer budget, we've all got it. But we all also have to live in this world, in reality. So, um, yeah, if you're in the negotiation process right now and you just got one of those big, fat, scary reports, take a deep breath. Have somebody that maybe, someone in your family that is a, a kind of handyman guy, have him look at the stuff with you, right? Even if that's not your husband, whoever that happens to be, have them look and go, you know what, that's not what well, that kind of is. Or for God's sakes, Google it. Just Google it. I'm telling you, the last house I, I sold, 
They found some kind of mold somewhere, and it was this big, huge hoopla. And in two days, thank God for the internet. I mean, I got the EPA's phone number to call them directly, and I became a slight mold expert just from you know using the resources that we have, right? So think about that. And uh, next, we'll talk about what happens after we get through those strenuous ten days, and what's next. So. Stay tuned. Um, please keep subscribing and sharing and liking. And if these are getting boring and you want to hear about something else, let me know. So, uh, I did talk to a Fizbo today straight off of Zillow. Just a cold call. I can't believe it happened. But she may let me interview her or she thinks I'm nuts. Whichever. I hope it's both. I hope she thinks I'm nuts and I get to interview her. I don't care. I think it'll be great. So, um, like I said, hit me up with any ideas or anything you want to talk about. Any questions you have in real estate. T tell me your bad experiences. We'll see how you can make it right the next time. So, Anyway, I love you all guys and have a great night. Bye.